Hey, praise the Lord. Greetings to you once again in Jesus' name. This is Brother Clinton. Let's talk for a few minutes about unanswered prayers. I'd like to talk to you about this because uh, a very dear brother wrote to me a few days ago and asked me about it, and I thought rather than writing back to him, that's a good idea for a video. So I wrote it down on my desk. I've been praying about it, and I'd like to share with you a short message about it. You know, I don't know who this man is. I never heard his name before, but I came across this while I was searching for some things online. And I really like what he said here. He says, prayer busters, which he uh, is, is a term that he uses uh, as causes of unanswered prayer, are prayerlessness, unconfessed sin, unresolved relational conflict, selfishness, uncaring attitudes, and inadequate faith. Well, praise the Lord. This outlines in just a few words exactly everything that I can think of that the scripture gives as a reason for unanswered prayer. You know, this man, this this brother who wrote to me recently, he said, um, part of his letter is, is right here. He said, further, I heard a local story about a man who firmly believed in Jesus Christ, who over years, quote, wore out his knees in prayer. He now 75 to 80 years old told me that he had in, that he had been disappointed by unanswered prayers. Excuse me. He had in disappointment, I think this brother meant, by unanswered prayers, rejected God, and also asked me, what father would kill his own son in such a cruel, wicked, heinous way and then take pleasure in it? Sometimes I have thought exactly the same way. Is there any other reason that sin, excuse me, is there any other reason than sin which would explain unanswered prayer? Lack of faith, disobedience? We yes, of course. But let's talk about this man that he used for an example. This man is 75 to 80 years old, and he told me that he had, in disappointment by unanswered prayers, rejected God. Okay? The Bible says that if we are to receive the kingdom of God, if we are to enter into the kingdom of God, we are to receive it as little children. And if someone has been praying to God for years and years and years and has not had their prayers answered, then there's obviously a reason for that. Either they're not obeying the word of God or they don't believe the word of God. They're not receiving the kingdom of God as a little child. They're not walking in God's commandments. They're walking in unforgiveness or something of that of that like. And that is obvious and manifest by this man's question. He said, what father would kill his own son in such a cruel, wicked, heinous way and then take pleasure in it? The fact that that man asked this question makes manifest that he does not believe the Word of God, that he has never believed the Word of God, that he has never submitted himself to God, because the Bible says that God reveals his covenant to them that fear him. It's written in the 25th Psalm, verse 14. Okay, So, if a man would ask this question, what father would kill his own son in such a cruel, wicked, heinous way, and then take pleasure in it, this makes manifest that this man never believed the Word of God. He never feared God or submitted himself to God. And that's the reason why he was asking things in prayer, and his prayers were apparently unanswered. I say apparently because we don't know that his prayers were unanswered. All that we know is that he professed that his prayers were unanswered. Also remember that the Scripture says in, in the book of James that when ye ask, ye ask amiss, that you may spend it upon yourselves. Okay? We are not here in this world to pray to the Almighty God for a more expensive car, for a bigger house, for a better job, so we can make more money, so that we can spend it all on ourselves. Does God want you to have a job so that you can, so that, or rather I should say a way to earn a living so that you can live in a house and, and support your family? Yes, of course he does, and he will bless you in those things. But when it crosses the line to the point of covetousness, when you begin to love money instead of loving God with all of your heart, the love of money is the root of all evil. And if those prayers are answered, you can kind of expect that they're answered from the same God of guys like Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagen and, and Marilyn Hickey and Joyce Meyer and and T.D. Jakes and all those professional liars. Their God is Satan, and he will be glad to answer your prayers and make you rich. He is the one that people make deals with to become Hollywood stars and music stars, and he'll be happy to answer those things for you. But God will give you those things that you have need of. And he said, if you ask anything according to his will, he will give it to you if you believe it. Praise the Lord. So let's continue talking about this. Prayerlessness. Prayerlessness. Well, that's a good word to describe people who are, are not people. That's a good word to describe a condition which can come upon all of us, each and every one of us. If you think that you're exempt from this, you're deceiving yourself. And it is a condition of it is a condition that causes us to become weak. Prayerlessness to a Christian is the same thing as uh, anorexia to a human being, okay, to any man or woman. 
it causes you to become weak. Prayerlessness. The less time you spend in prayer, the less strength that you will have in the Spirit. Okay, You must pray. You must spend time in prayer. You must watch and pray. Jesus Christ said, watch and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape the things that are going to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. If you do not spend time in prayer, you are starving yourself just as if you were to starve your flesh by not eating food or drinking water. Now, granted, that can be a good thing if we're in fasting and prayer, but if you're just a, a, a man or a woman who just forgets to eat or you're too lazy to eat and weeks go by and you haven't eaten just because you're plain too lazy to do it, that's going to cause a problem with your physical health and it's going to eventually cause you to die if you continue in it. And the same holds for prayerlessness. We need to spend time in prayer. Even if you have nothing to say to the Lord, just take time to get on your knees before him and say, you know, Lord, I don't really have anything to say right now unless you give me something to say. I just wanted to bow before you and spend some time on my knees before you to humble myself before you and give you thanks for all that you've done for me. Even if you don't have anything to say to the Lord at that time, anything to talk about, anything to ask him for, you can say that and just spend time before him. You know, the Bible says that if you will Humble yourself before the Lord. He will lift you up. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Unconfessed sin. Okay, This will cause your prayers to be unanswered because sin separates you from God. Now, if you're not a Christian, unconfessed sin is definitely dangerous for you, but confessing your sin to the Lord is not going to get you saved or get your sin forgiven. You need to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that means to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Once you've done that, you become a Christian, and if you're a Christian, the Bible says if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And so if you're cleansed from all unrighteousness, you are righteous and you have confidence before God because you do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And if you are in that state, then you have upon you the breastplate of righteousness and you are able to come before God with a clear conscience, with the answer of a good conscience, as Peter said in, in 1 Peter 3.21 and to ask of him anything according to his will. And if you believe it, then you will receive it. But if you have unconfessed sin in your life, then your heart condemns you. And if your heart condemns you, then God is greater than your heart and knows all things. So if you're trying to hide your sin from God, you're doing it in vain because you can't hide it from him. So go ahead and confess it and repent from it, and he will forgive you if you're a Christian. If you're not a Christian, obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he will forgive every sin that you've ever committed in your life. Hallelujah. Unresolved relational conflict, okay, unforgiveness. Jesus said, when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have ought against any, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. For if ye forgive not your neighbor or your brother their trespasses, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. If there's somebody in your life that you have hatred against, that you're holding something against, that you're refusing to forgive for something, no matter what they have done, you need to let that go. You need to not only let it go before God, but you need to contact that person, if at all possible, and let that person know that you let it go, that you forgive them, that you hold nothing against them, that they owe you nothing, that you have completely forgiven them, and you have given the situation to God. And then go to God and tell him that, mean it with all of your heart, and get that situation out of your heart. This also applies to husbands and wives. Okay, Peter said in the, in the third chapter of 1 Peter, let me just go there real quick in my Holy Bible. Pardon me for a second while I find it, because I only have one hand as I'm using my other hand for the microphone. But First Peter chapter 3, it says, um, Likewise, in First Peter chapter 3, verse 7, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Okay, so this doesn't mean that you are to to accept everything that your wife may do if she is rebellious or unbelieving or anything like that. It doesn't mean that you're to compromise the word of God for her, but it does mean that you are to treat her as the weaker vessel, that you are to treat her as, as just as if you would treat a child. If a child comes up to you and kicks you in the leg and says, I hate you, you don't um, beat the child down or hate the child. You recognize that the child is a child and that he doesn't yet understand the things that he's talking about because he hasn't yet reached maturity. And sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, and I'm not speaking against females because men can act like children too, but sometimes wives act like children and you have to recognize that they are the weaker vessel and that they have needs that are greater than yours. They have weaknesses that are greater than yours. And for that reason, they have you to be their strength. 
And we need to understand that and to walk in forgiveness with them, to walk in patience with them, and to love them, even as Jesus Christ loves us. Sometimes when we act like little children and we deserve to be smacked down, Jesus Christ doesn't smack us down, does he? He looks at us in love, and if he corrects us, he corrects us in love with gentleness. And that's how we are to be toward our wives, lest our prayers be hindered. That can also hinder your prayers. Selfishness. Selfishness. That will hinder your prayers, won't it? You know, the... the there's I, there's a multitude of, of verses of the scripture that talk about selfishness, um, and I can't seem to think of one right now. But there are multitudes of them. Um, you know, let everyone care for the needs of others more than himself. Um, let everyone look upon the things of others more than himself, or something like that. The scripture says. The scripture says this many times. It's better to give than to receive. This is what the Lord said. Um, love your neighbor as yourself. It's it's just obvious from all the scripture that you are to view your neighbor as better than yourself. You are to honor your neighbor as better than yourself. And when you do that, when you minister to other people, then in the process of doing that, God will minister to you. You see, there is a scripture that says in the Proverbs, He that maketh himself rich hath nothing, and yet he that, hath, he that maketh himself poor uh, has has all things. I didn't quote it exactly right, but the scripture says that if you search and seek to make yourself rich in this world, then eventually you'll have nothing. But if you give that which you have, then that which you have need of will be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and, and, and in great measure. You see, this is what the scripture teaches. So if you spend your time trying to get everything that you think you want, then that's your reward. But if you spend your time ministering to other people to make sure that they have their needs taken care of, then God will see that and he will make sure that your needs are taken care of and abound and abounding. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So selfishness will definitely hinder your prayers. Uncaring attitudes. Well, that kind of goes along with selfishness, doesn't it? Uncaring attitudes. If you don't care about someone, you're not loving your neighbor. And if you're not loving your neighbor, you're not obeying God because the second greatest commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. And of course, inadequate faith, inadequate faith. You know, that's a subject that, that offends a lot of people. But you know, the, the apostles one time, they were they had been casting out devils and healing the sick, and they were trying to cast out a devil and couldn't do it. And Jesus came and he cast out the devil. And they said, Lord, why couldn't we cast him out? And he said, because of your unbelief. And I can just imagine the look on those apostles' faces that they said, as he said, Oh, your your unbelief. Well, what are you talking about, our unbelief? We believe. We've been casting out devils and healing the sick, and we've been watching you raise the dead. But Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. And then he talked to them about fasting and prayer. And he said in another place, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it should obey you. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things that he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. See, so if you believe, if you ask the Lord something according to his will, which means it's according to his word. If you know his word, you know what his will is. And if you ask him something according to his will, if you're in covenant with him and you're obeying his word and you believe that you receive it, you shall have it. This is what the scripture says. So all these things are reasons that prayers would not be answered. The prayers of the saints go up to the Lord God. They are heard. And when he had taken the book, the scripture says, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. In that last day, when, when these things are coming to pass that are written in the, in the fifth chapter of the Revelation and in the eighth chapter of the Revelation with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne, it will be made manifest that the prayers of all saints which have been prayed throughout the ages have been heard. And a lot of those saints died in faith having not received the things that they asked for. Hebrews chapter 11 tells us this. But they didn't receive them for the purpose that we all might receive them together. And if you'll read the 11th chapter of Hebrews, it'll make that manifest to you. Whether your prayers are answered in a second, or in a year, or in a thousand years, your prayers are heard if you belong to God and if you are obeying Him. And if you will continue to believe, you will receive. That's the message that the Word of God teaches. Matthew chapter 22, verse 21. Excuse me, yes, first chapter 22, verse 21. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and may this be an encouragement to you in Jesus' name. Amen.